Hi, we are Group Eight. We are comprised of Addie Kate, Colton McCaleb, Noemi Valenzuela, and me, SK Hall. And we are focused on grading the masters. So this is our activity and it's called Four Corners. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but the idea is to get the students up and moving, um, get the blood flowing, you know, it's that pa that like post-lunch sleepy, and so it would be a more interactive game to get us up moving around the classroom. Um, we would have pieces of paper that would have an A, B, C, and D written, one on each, and we put it in the four corners of the room, and we would go one question by question. We would have more sides than this, but I figured it'd be easier um, and less time consuming to be flipping through all those slides and to just show them all now um, for you since we're in this situation. But these are the four questions and you can see um, each of the answers. And I thought it would be much more interesting instead of quizzing thing, quizzing the students on um, things that we definitely probably most likely don't know anything about. Um, and instead, um, give them a sense of seeing what their peers think and um, seeing everybody's opinions on the matter, um, like whenever you're creating, which do you tend to focus on? Um, what do you think is the most important influencing whether a piece of art is the best? And um, then, of course, the normal, like what's included in our part, like presentation. Do you think art can be graded? And do color and drawing always live in conflict, which are two important questions that we'll be answering later on. So now that we've had you up, moving, running around, um, and you're much more alert and awake, you're probably wondering, what's the point? Um, and there are definitely quite a few questions that we're gonna be answering today that we're sure that you have. Um, so who are the Poussinists? Who are the Rubenists? Um, the conflict between drawing and color, fact or fiction? Who and what is the Roger DePaio's grading system? And what does all this have to do with today's art? The group called the Poussinists were named after Nicholas Poussin, um, who was an artist known for working very carefully with gestures and colors, and he just handled all that very carefully. And he put his main focus on the movement within the drawings and the expressions of the subject, which made his pieces memorable and are also responsible for making them known for their combination of poetry and reason, as well as sensibility and intellect. So, in the debate of drawing versus color, the Poussinists actually favored the importance of drawing over color and believed that line and form and adherence to the rules of line and form are essential to what makes an artwork strong. This debate had actually come up much earlier in the Italian Renaissance where they had the debate of disegno versus colorito, which would be color and design or drawing. And during the Renaissance in Florence, they believed that the fundamental concept of design was actually what unified the arts. So connecting that to this, they would be, the Poussinists would have been on the side of disegno over color. Um, and they just believed that drawing is important because it's what appeals to the mind. And essentially, they were the ones who followed the path of classical art. So here we have The Death of Marat, which is a painting done in 1793 by Jacques-Louis David. Um, this one is depicted in a classical style, and it actually paints a very bleak and dramatic scene and places drama in the front and center, but it does so through the very um, hard lines and, and just the gesture and position of the main subject within the painting. You can see that there are very straight and strong um, lines within the composition. Nothing's very loose and free-flowing. It's all just very stiff, and um, that's just exactly what the Poussinists went for. So Jacques was actually a Poussinist artist, and that's why he created the piece like that. It's this really interesting contrast between the specificity of the foreground, especially the crate on which he's written his name and written a uh, Marat, to Marat, against the indeterminate open brushwork of the background that almost doesn't look finished. It's got this soft, feathery, warm quality. It isolates Marat. It focuses our attention on him. But as we look around at other paintings in this museum, what I see in the upper part of a painting are angels and David can't have that anymore and a new iconography has not yet developed. So instead what we have is a lighter field in the upper right corner balancing Marat's body in the lower left corner. 
And what a body, the anatomy, the muscles in the shoulder and the arms and the collarbone. We can see that neoclassical interest in studying the anatomy, painting it very carefully, paying a lot of attention to contours, modeling and the effects of light and dark. But what strikes me is the spareness in direct contrast to the luxurious interiors of Rococo paintings, of the lifestyle of the aristocracy, which was the subject of Rococo paintings. Here, a decidedly stark interior, Spartan, no elaborate furniture, no gold. This is a man, David wants to tell us, lived according to the Republican ideals of the revolution. And it looks like they will endure forever. In contrast, Peter Paul Rubens painted with more focus on color than line and had a depiction of movement by loose breaststrokes, usually portraying clouds in the backgrounds. This is a self-portrait of Rubens where he used a lot of loose brushstrokes in order to depict um, soft lines of his beard, of the clouds in the background, and you can tell that there's um, a sense of softness that's different than Poussin. The first example is Lion Hunt by Rubens. It has flowing, rippling line focused on color to portray the movement. We see this once again in clouds that are in the backgrounds, lots of rippling um, movement through the muscles and the lions and the clods that are all um, drawing your eye from the left, bottom left, to the top right. And the eyeline is drawn through the rippling movement and there's less focus on line but there's lots of curves, um, curvature in the muscles and the fabric and in the movement of the lions. Um, it's also using a lot of blending in order to portray that movement. And Rubens argued that color was what was important to define an artwork and not lines. The last example is one of Rubens' most famous paintings, Le Chapeau de Pale. It's about a woman who, once again, we can see um, the clouds in the background, which are very characteristic of this style, um, the flowy fabric, the soft lines around her face and hair and hat. Um, there's vibrant colors and a sense of movement. Roger de Piles traveled through Europe and got to experience the most incredible art pieces firsthand and it inspired him to create a grading system after these two conflicting ideas have just been around for a while and he used um, composition, drawing, color, and expression as his grading rubric and there's a 20 point scale um, to rate each category that all summed up together for the art piece and Raphael and Rubens were the two highest scoring artists on the scale just which means that the piles lean towards the sides of Ruben and his more flowy and colorful painterly style. The question, how does this connect to the contemporary world, um, can pretty much be summed up that with the influence that was carried on with his popular grading scale, it inspired future artists to um, critique their art in that form and uh it also means that the rubens view of the flowy more colorful art um, would continue because it proved higher on the scale of reading so now that we've had you up moving or running around um and you're much more alert and awake you're probably wondering what's the point um, and there are definitely quite a few questions that we're going to be answering today that we're sure that you have. Um, so who are the Poussinists? Who are the Rubenists? Um, the conflict between drawing and color, fact or fiction? Who and what is the Roger de Pilo's grading system? And what does all this have to do with today's art? And here is our final slide, our sources. Um, as you can see, we got a variety of um, different articles, PDFs, um, and all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for taking your time to listen to us talk about the Masters, even though we are missing quite a few audience members. Um, but we hope you're doing well, and thank you so much.